Hi everyone, uh, this is a video just to summarize the points that were discussed during the Zoom call. Um, I will be writing up notes as well to send by email just in case um, this file is too big to post, um, but I can get onto YouTube anyway, so it should be all right. But just to summarize the, the key things we talked about, um, plays equipment, a lot of plays and wheels tend to hit the ball off the end of the table. Uh, therefore, are we as, as coaches allowing them to play with bats that are not fit for purpose. Um, players obviously want to play with the best stuff. They, um, they, they see you know, all the catalogues and the, and the top players playing with these bats and they get them a little bit too quickly in my mind. Uh, just walking around the, uh, the squads where I coach um, in the Welsh squad and trying different players' bats. And some are too fast, some are too slow in actual fact. So... Um, the equipment our players are using is it fit for purpose because um, I know I'm very particular I use the same bat for many years um, but the bats I use from some of the top players in Wales as well um, is quite worrying because the feeling on the bats and the, and the speed like I said on some of the bats is, is too much therefore um, you know they can't control it and it's not down to technique and even when we are sort of coaching technique if a player is using the wrong bat, it's obviously at a disadvantage for their progress. So it's something I think for us as coaches to, to think about. It's vital that players are playing with the right equipment and what that means. You know, the right equipment is obviously um, quite subjective to, to players' uh, opinions uh, and coaches' opinions. So you've got to you know, have a range of things that you're trying. Don't stick with the same thing. I realize players or, or top players in Wales are sponsored, so they have to conform to what their sponsors want them to play with in certain circumstances. And the expense of equipment these days is um, ever increasing. Therefore, you've got to be careful with what you uh, are advising to the players and the parents about what to use. But ultimately, too many players, I think, in Wales are using the wrong stuff. Um, and then that comes on to the second topic we spoke about about um, uh, combination bats, pimples, anti-spin, uh, and, and defenders. I don't think, and especially in, in, even in the Welsh squad, so table length Wales coaches are, are um, also guilty of this, is that we haven't got any defenders at the moment. We haven't got any players playing with uh, short pimples, long pimples, uh, and even anti-spin, which is coming into the game a little bit more these days. The, the, the two sides of that is obviously will get um, good results for players who wouldn't necessarily get those results with, with smooth on the forehand and backhand. If you can turn some players into using pimples, that will give them a quick fix um, in terms of their results and their progress. But our players will get a chance to play against combination mats during squads. And, and that has been uh, a factor in, in well, since I've been coach for the last eight years. And when, we, when I first started, we had players like Natasha Reese and and Megan Phillips and a few others using pimples and I think it was good for our other players to sample that because when you're playing out uh, in England and, and in Europe obviously players are or some players are playing with these type of bats and at the moment our players are struggling to um, to read the spins to know what to do to what you know what serve to do and and that's why I was saying it's as, as, as a two-way sort of um, positive if some of our players are playing with it other players get to play against that and those players wouldn't necessarily get um, the success with smooth will get maybe a bit more success using these type of bats. My philosophy in general is, is not to, to coach players using uh, pimples and, and anti-spin and whatnot. But if their style um, says they should be, then, then of course, you know, I think we should be turning some players into using these sort of um, rubbers and equipment. Um, let me talk about now players um, and their long-term sort of aims and, and coaching aims. I think we as um, coaches sometimes tend to think too long-term. We want that player to play the right way, ready for the Commonwealth Games, ready for the Olympic Games, ready for the World Championships or whatever, you know, what, whatever um, tournaments are their goals. And sometimes we need to bring it back down to short-term success. Because if you're obviously always planning long-term, uh, a player may not get there because a player's uh, career is like five years, six years in, in that, on average. Some of our players go further than that and they, they, they have good long careers. But generally, a player's only in the system 
sort of three, four, five years. Therefore, they need quick success in order to turn that short term and the length of time into a long term length of time. Um, you know, if a player starts playing at eight years old, very rarely you see them going into the you know, uh, into their teens. Uh, they, they, it's relentless. Uh, there's lots of tournaments on offer. You've got to practice this game every day. Um, there's a lot of expenses we talk there with equipment, but obviously with tournaments, entry fees, hotels, traveling the country up and down, and it, it pulls a little bit of um, uh, it pulls on the family uh, commitments because you know families might have other brothers and sisters that they got to um, deal with, and, and they got some things they need to do in other sports. So table tennis is quite demanding. So you don't see players in the game too long for those type of reasons, unless the success is there which I'm talking about short-term success. And then obviously we keep our players hopefully a little bit longer in the game that we do at present because we see players, they come and go pretty quick. Um, they don't get the success they need because maybe we're sometimes coaching them too long-term. Uh, and if they're not getting there, and that cut off of uh, you know, school studies, GCSEs come into play 14 years old, 15 years old, 16 years old, and, and then on to university. And then obviously we lose a lot of players uh, during that time because players want to focus on their careers more than table tennis because table tennis at that time hasn't given them anything uh, you know hasn't given them anything to sort of get their teeth into and, and parents will say it's time for you obviously to think about getting the career because table tennis isn't going to get you that then we went on to um, you know finding out about why players play the game um, it's vital to know why Players go to events where they show up at training every day, every week. If you as coaches ask your players, why do you play the game? And you probably have at some point, and this is what this video is for, obviously, to give you reminders about um, things you might have done before but have forgotten. Um, the next time you're in a training session, ask some of the players, why do you play the game? And they might not give you anything back. And this is something I've done uh, last week. I asked one of my players, um, I said, why do you play the game? And they said, um, you know, I played it because my dad played it, therefore I played it. And I said, yeah, that's fine, start the name, but why do you play it right now? And, you know, it obviously took a bit of time to sort of get into the conversation. And then he said to me, yeah, you know, I play it because, you know, I'm quite good at it. I enjoy, you know, pro you know progressing. I enjoy winning. And, and these are the type of things we've got to think about. Players play the game because they win or oh, can win a bit. They enjoy it, yes, but you only enjoy it when... When you're winning, you only enjoy it when you're progressing, when you see a new shot, when you see a new serve. And it, as coaches, we obviously develop their games for that fact. We want to see the progress of footwork, forehand, backhand, whatever it may be. Um, it's not all about winning and losing. Of course, players have to lose and, and accept losing because that's part of the game of, of learning and progressing anyway. But if players are not getting that stimulus of winning, of even, you know, and winning is obviously different for everyone. It could be getting out of the group, that's winning for someone. It could be winning a consolation, that's winning for someone. And then you obviously set new goals as, as you go along. But if we're um, not asking our players and ask them why do they play, and if they're just plodding along, you know, day to day, week to week, month to month, and then they might get lost in the fact of goal setting or, or realizing, actually, yeah, I train up and play this game because, yeah, I'm progressing. It feels good when I'm progressing, it feels good when I'm winning. It feels good when I'm working towards something. But if you, I, think, I think if you don't have those conversations, um, it just gets lost in a, in a blur of just going through the motions from day to day and week to week. And that was it, really. Um, we had a bit of a question and answer at the end. Um, people were asking me about those certain things, but that was the, the main flex of it about um, equipment, why players play the game, and uh, you know, about coaching and, and how long players are involved in the game and, and you know, do you ask your players and, and, and then we talked a little bit at the end about what defines you as a player and this is I know you, I'm talking to the coaches but I want you as coaches to ask your players what defines you as a player do you, um, are, you know, are you known for a great serve are you known for a great forehand are you known for your fast footwork what are you known for and this is something you need to ask your players are they just generally a decent player or someone like Gavin Romke is known for his serves um, each player or each good player should be known for something and um, if your player is not then you need to have that conversation with them ask them 
what can you be known for? You've got a, a decent forehand. We need to make sure that becomes a great forehand. And then the rest of your game will obviously um, come come with that. And when you, you know, when your forehand's improving, no doubt your back end and your block and your, and your short, game, short game will improve um, with that. So they're the main things. I'm going to email them out to you as well. Uh, we can do this again uh, in a couple of, couple of months and make sure that even half hour of your day is, is spent wisely in, in listening to some of the topics I raised, but also having a chance to ask questions and engage with me and the other Tim Wales coaches um, as much as possible. Okay, thanks.